to share a story with you of some information that shook me to my core. And as I do that, I want all of you to think back to a time in your life where something unexpected happened. Now, when you travel the world and went on a little bit bolder by the age of 14, and have had a very public emancipation with your parents by the age of 17, have lost much of your Olympic memorabilia due to a flood, and have watched your wedding dress go up in flames due to a house fire. You're not really surprised by much. <laughs> but discovering my sister, Jennifer, she was a surprise. It would be December 10th, which was the day that changed my life. Earlier that week, I had missed a certified letter that came to my house, and I was in the midst of final exams week. And I took a study break to go and pick up that letter and wondered what it was all about. I went to the post office, and I decided I needed to go and pick up this letter. So I sat down in my car, and I tore open the contents, and I wondered, who could this be from? Inside the letter, there were some photographs, a nice thing and type letter, and some court documents. And I started to thumb through those court documents, wondering, you know, what was this all about? And I immediately zoned in on something familiar to me. It was my parents' signatures. And those signatures I knew so well, because I grew up watching my parents sign my you know, papers in school and all of that. And I knew immediately that this is something very serious. And I immediately looked over to the photographs. There were about eight or ten of them. And those photographs looked like a spinning image of my youngest sister, Christina. It was uncanny the resemblance of this young woman. It was almost as if they were twins. In the goosebumps. And I started to read the letter. And I wondered what it all meant, starting to put the pieces of the puzzle all together. And I took a deep breath, and I read that letter. And halfway through that letter, I saw something that would change me forever. It said, my biological last name was Mochino. Wow. Oh my goodness. Is this what it really means? Is this person telling me that they're my long-lost sister and I never knew she existed? Tears came running down my face. I was extremely emotional. As you can imagine, finding out that you had another sibling in this world to share the same DNA with is very touching. It's very deep. And it would be the news that changed my life forever. And ultimately, I wanted to know who this young woman was. And there she was, opening her heart to me. And I needed to let her know that all the evidence that she placed into that letter that changed my life was unbelievably true and very real to me. And there was no doubt in my mind. It wasn't just a fan making it up. It was the truth. And I finally found out that there was someone else in this world. Again, to share my same DNA. I wanted to know more about her. So, to put this in perspective for you, I was becoming a mother. I was nine months pregnant. I was losing my father to a very rare eye cancer. I was gaining a sister and gaining a daughter, all the while trying to complete my undergraduate degree in the midst of final exams week, and in completely hormonal. So you can imagine it was a lot for me to take in. It was quite a lot for anybody to take in. But it was something that I knew I needed to make right. And so I composed myself after sitting in my car for what felt like a couple hours, trying to understand all this information and make sense of even the slightest words. And eventually I went back to my house and I sat at my desk and I wrote Jennifer a letter. It was a happy medium of sorts because I wasn't ready to pick up the phone and call her. I wasn't ready to say, 
you know, to answer all the questions and, and talk to her just yet because I was still making sense of all of this information. How was I going to handle it? How did I need to approach it? What was I going to do? And I needed to ask my parents a few more questions before I picked up the phone and called her. So I wrote her this letter and I said, you're going to be an auntie very soon. But let me finish final exams and let me give birth to a healthy baby girl. Because I didn't want this news to adversely affect my unborn baby. There was a lot of shock, a lot of tears, a lot of emotions. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Entire weeks leading up to giving birth. And I didn't want all of that news to have an effect. And so I took a deep breath. I wrote her that letter. I sent her a Christmas card as well and a bouquet of flowers. And I said, I believe you. Just let me have a little bit of time so that I can take a breath and understand all of this news and take it all in. After all, Jennifer had known for four years looking for us, me and my sister Christina. And so I needed a little bit more than one day to gather my thoughts and get some more questions answered so I could answer the questions she had for me when we got on the phone. And I thought, how great. Let's have it be a Christmas surprise. Could you imagine how awesome it would be so she could find out that her sisters accepted her before Christmas? And what a great Christmas present. A reunion of all the sisters and her finally knowing that her sister knew about her. That was very special. It was my goal to write her right away. I even blew off studying just for a little bit that afternoon so I could get this letter out to her. And it was so important to me to do that. So a few weeks later, I give birth to a healthy baby girl on Christmas Day, the best present I could ever ask for. And a few weeks later after that, on January 14th, 2008, I finally picked up the phone and called her. I took a deep breath, sat at my desk again, the very desk that I wrote her the letter. And I said, okay. I would call her, I said, hello, Jennifer. And we talked, I had sticky notes all over my desk in case I forgot what I wanted to say, in case I got lost or it was an awkward silence. It was all over my desk, different colored ones. But I didn't mean it. We got on the phone, we talked as if we knew each other forever. And perhaps that's the nature versus nurture bond. Perhaps it was we shared the same DNA so we were at ease with each other. An hour went by so fast that if she didn't have to leave to work, probably would have been even longer. But you know what? It was such a special reunion to begin our lives in that way. And halfway through the conversation, she said, oh, by the way, you know I was born without legs, right? And I mean, that was shock number two. Not only did I have a sister that I didn't know about, but oh my goodness, she was born without legs. And I started to think back to the letter as I was overcome with emotion again, not trying, or trying not to let Jennifer know that I was emotional. And I couldn't believe it. That shock again, hit me very, very deeply. And I thought back to the letter, I was like, did she tell me anywhere in there? Did I miss it somehow? All the photographs she sent me were from the waist up. And so I didn't even think that when she told me she did softball and volleyball and gymnastics, and I was in fact her inspiration to start competing in gymnastics. I never imagined she could do it without legs. I never seen anyone do it without legs. So of course I, I didn't even comprehend it. I didn't think about it. And then I started to wonder, wow, I can't wait to see her be an athlete and see all these wonderful things about her and her athletic ability and her charisma and everything. I just felt over the phone how, wow, she's such a wonderful human being. I get to call her my sister. How cool is that? And I was so proud of everything that she had done to approach our sisterhood and approach it in such a healthy way to where we could start our relationship in a new beginning. And she was so gracious, and I will forever be thankful for the way she handled it and reached out to me. And I will forever look back and be thankful that I handled it with a positive you know, message and in a positive way, because had I handled it neg negatively, we may not have started our sisterhood with such a clean slate and such a fresh beginning. So what I realized is that life is a series 
of unexpected occurrences. And if we all take a minute to step back and choose how we wish to handle those unexpected life occurrences, we can handle them in two different ways. You know, some things can be shocking and we're in disbelief and you can't believe they've happened to you. Um, but it changes your reality. And if you choose to approach it in a positive way and choose to accept it with a you know, open heart and open minds, you're going to see that you're going to grow as a person from all of those experiences. They're all life lessons. And I can't tell you how much I've learned in the last you know, five years. It's been a great learning lesson and a beautiful reunion of family. And it was so special for me to be able to be in this situation with my sister where we could be reunited and start with a clean slate and have such an open heart. And I want all of you to know that in life, I subscribe to this notion that things happen not to us, but for us, so that we can learn and grow and be better people. And I subscribe to the notion that all things in life can be unexpected, and it's when our own re realities are unexpected, unexpectedly interrupted, it's when we're most alive. And I have an unexpected surprise for all of you today. Are you ready for it? Let's stand up and please give a warm welcome to my sister, Jennifer Ricker. Thought became about 
just finding these long lost sisters. This was it. This was the time. Then I went into full blown stalker mode. I called my uncle and I said, okay, this is it. This is the time. I know she lives in Ohio and I know she's married. I'm going to find me the rest of the information. I called my parents and I said, please make a copy of every single legal document you have for the adoption. Send it my way. And I told myself, Jen, this is your last shot. You better do everything, everything in your power to make this work because this is your third and final attempt at finding your long lost sisters. So I packaged it up, I went to the post office, that poor lady, I grilled her so hard. I, I think I did everything but ask her to personally deliver this letter to Dominique. And then came the longest two weeks of my entire life. What if she didn't respond? What if she didn't want to talk to me? Maybe it wasn't really happy. I remember I was going through my mail one evening. I, I saw I had a Christmas card. I paid no attention to who was wrong. I just ripped it right open, saw a letter fall out, and I saw Dominique's signature. I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. I don't want to open it, but it's bad. So I knew it was going to be like a bandage. Just rip it off, open it, read it. So I got about halfway through, and I'll never forget that line. You are about to be an auntie. And I knew at that moment she accepted me as her sister. And about three weeks after that, I get a phone call on my way out the door ready for work. Didn't recognize the number. Hello? Hello, Jennifer. This is Dominique. So this is my childhood idol calling me to talk on the phone, not to mention the fact she is my biological sister. What do you say to that? Hello? <laughs> Ironically, the conversation just naturally flowed before I knew it. An hour had gone by. I hadn't had to go to work in probably more than like three or four hours, but you know, toward the end of our conversation, we naturally we wanted to meet up. We were excited, finally meet face to face. That phone conversation was in January of 2008, and we met for the very first time in Cleveland, Ohio, in May of 2008. It was one of the most surreal moments of my entire life. I remember sitting next to her, talking to her talking and listening, and then zoning in and out as if I were observing the situation. Talking and listening and then pulling back again. And that moment, this entire story, is just a true testament to how my life has truly been a series of unexpected events. We are so excited. We can't wait to see what the next 10 to 20 years has in store for us.